as I was uh, doing uh, the one videos a day on using AI to insert in different projects, I ran across how simple it really is to take a bitmap drawing and turn it into a 3D relief model that may be good enough to actually carve and use in a project, or you may need to do a couple other things to manipulate it. And I'm not gonna get into all of the other things to manipulate it. This video is not gonna be about uh, fully developing a 3D model that's, uh, that's top of the line, but what I do wanna share with you is how easy it is to take a bitmap, especially a simple one, and turn it into a 3D relief model if you have a spire and how you can take that then and use that in a project. And all I'm going to do in this video is go through the process of taking a picture that I created out of AI and then turn it into a 3D model in Aspire. Now you can't do this in VCarve Pro. This is one of the examples of why you pay the more money for Aspire, but it's a pretty cool feature. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I've heard there's better software, but the software of choice for me right now is this Copilot Designer, uh, which is what you see on the screen right here. And I'm going to go model a koala for my first model. And there is a couple of key pieces of information I use uh, to get a relief model and a couple other pieces of information in the clues when I want a sketching model, meaning something that's gonna give me some nice clear black and white vectors that I can easily put in a sketch carve or a laser job. Those are easier to trace, so I use a different set of prompts. Now here's the prompts that I think are important, and that is, it doesn't have to be in this order, but you want something that is, you're making the software know you want a grayscale image, and you want to the software to know you want high contrast so that you could make a relief model and then it's got to be balanced lighting and it's got to allow the details to be seen across so it doesn't have big shadows and so forth with uh, sharp contours and textures and so if you have those kind of keywords in your prompt you're going to have a better chance of getting a model that looks something like you see here. I got a number of different opportunities and uh, this is actually the one I ended up doing a relief model on. So with that, let's go into the software and show you how we get there. All right, now that we have our koala picture, we're gonna go ahead and close this window down. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna import a bitmap and let's go to the downloads and I think I liked three best open that one up all right so we've got this one we'll see how this all looks and now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a vector around this because I want to be able to trim it out when I get done so I want to create a vector hit close I'm going to adjust that vector so it fits just where I want it there we go then the next thing I want to do is to select the bitmap and usually I need to invert so we'll see what it looks like before I invert. So I won't invert it at first. The reason you normally have to invert the bitmap is because of the way Aspire interprets the colors of the image. If it's darker it means it's deeper meaning it'll sink into the model and if it's lighter, it's supposed to be closer to the surface. And when I'm looking at this model, it looks like if I invert it, which inverts the colors, that the nose and the parts that are supposed to be sticking out or up might turn dark. And so I'm a little hesitant to invert it at first. So I'm going to start out with it the way it is, and then we'll go from there. So now I take the model. And I come over here to this selection up here, create a component. Let me see so we can see when it's created. And that's how this component turned out. And so let's try to invert it and see what happens. Now what you see me doing here is I'm looking at the model and I'm uh, trying to see how it 
is setting up relative to height and uh, trying to get a feel for it. It's kind of hard to see on the screen if you're watching it in this video, I know. So what you see me doing here is I'm hitting the picture editor button and then I'm going to hit the invert button and we'll watch the picture invert and then we'll take it and go ahead and do the same thing we did before and convert it to a component or model. I don't like that the nose is, is going in instead of out. I think it might have worked better with the when we didn't invert it. So let's try it again. We're going to take this away and I'm going to go back over to the picture and I'm going to uninvert it. All right, so that's what it was like before it was inverted. And I think I like that better. So now let's go ahead and give it a little more depth. So a little more shape height here. What I'm doing is adjusting the top part a little. And that's simple. We have it adjusted. I like the contrast there, I think. I'm going to come over here, open this up. And let's go ahead and put a tool path on there. Put a roughing tool path. Probably don't really need the roughing tool path, but we'll put it on there anyway. And I'm going to use a... Oh, it's validating. I want to put the model just slightly, usually about 0.02 or so, somewhere around there, just to make sure there's no flat spots on it when I carve it. And I hit OK. And now I'm going to go to the selected vector. And that selected vector was that one right there. Now we got the vector selected. Let's move this over here. Back, let's make this full. And I got that. Boundary offset. Let's go is uh, nothing right at the moment. 3D raster. Calculate. Let's preview that. So now we'll do a finishing toolpath. Still got the vector. I've got a 1 8 inch and a 1 16 inch Taper ball nose here. We'll go to the selected vector again. Calculate. This could take a while. Okay, it finally calculated. That took about three minutes on my Mac. I don't think it would take as long on a uh, Windows machine, but I'm using Parallels on a Mac. Let's go ahead and preview those last two finishes. Okay, now let's see how this looks. If I go ahead and cut it out. So this is buried in there. So now let's do a one more path here. I'm going to put a profile tool path in here. And I'm going to select that vector. It's already selected. I'm going to go down Z. Material thickness. I'm going to do on the outside. Calculate. And I'm going to preview that visible tool path. Get rid of that, and now you have the picture. That's the koala carved into maple. I don't think it looks too bad, honestly. Now, for all intents and purposes, that's uh, pretty good. Let's try uh, putting a smoothing filter on it. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. We still have all the texture, but everything looks good. Hit OK. And then we can see how it looks now when we carve it. Let me do all three paths just to check to see if it looks different. Now we're going to hit the profile. And there you have it. So if you look at it from the side, that's what it looks like. That's pretty much everything about taking that AI picture, and like I said, I didn't spend a lot of time on the AI part, with some very minimal operations in the Aspire program, taking that and turning that into a relief. And that's pretty much what I wanted to cover with this video, but you know me, I can't ever leave uh, well enough alone, so I'm going to do one more thing, because people have asked me uh, on occasion about the molding toolpath. I committed to making a video. I still haven't. Sorry, folks. I haven't followed through on that. I, I'll get there. But in any event, 
I thought it would be really cool in this example to go ahead and put some molding profile around this small piece of wall art. And so the video will be a little longer. And if you're interested in learning how I'm going to go ahead and put molding around this wall art, then you might want to stick around. If you liked what you've got so far, I would appreciate you uh, putting a, a thumbs up or a comment, and a share. If you want to see how to do the molding toolpath with this project, go ahead and let me uh, show you that now over the next few minutes. And if you want to stay aware of uh, videos as I make them, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there and you'll be informed, uh, especially if you hit the all bell. With that, let's get started with the molding toolpath. And if you want to make it even fancier, you could put a molding toolpath on it. Let's hit the reset preview here. Let's go into the clip art and let's look at some molding profiles and see if we see a simple one that we might like. Let me grab this one right here and I'm gonna pull it up out of the way here and I'm gonna bring it over here so I can measure it. Come to the design tab, take a look at the size of it and right now it's one by one and I'm going to change this so it's 0 0.75 by 0 0.75 because that's the thickness of this wood. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of making that a profile cut, I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to use the molding toolpath and I'm going to select this one here as the drive rail. This one here is the profile. I'm going to come gap. I think I set it 0.02 for the model. We'll find out here. We'll see what it looks like. And I'm going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose. Same one I was using before. Very step over. That works good. Use automatic boundary offset. And this is what I was looking for. Create sharp corners. So I think I've got everything I want. I'm going to start at the top. So let's calculate that. And let's preview it and see what it looks like. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. So now let's close that for a second and let's go through here and do all of our tool paths. We're going to reset the preview and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to preview this. Boy, I goofed that up. I forgot to take out the profile bit. All right, so we're going to reset preview. We're going to leave this one off. And there you go. And if we wanted to get it completely done, I would take and I would I would come up here to this corner right here. Got to get out of that preview mode. So I got to go as here. And I've got to do an offset, 0 0.75, I think. Create sharp offset corners. Reset this one more time. And there we are. Now it's nice and clean because I cleaned up the end of the profile. And there's your art piece. You've got the koalas staring out at you. Not bad, I don't think. I'll have to get some time and actually go carve it. Let's see what it says the carving time would be. So the way it's set up right now, it says it's got 15 hours, and that's primarily because of that 16th inch ball nose. Let's do it if I did not put the 16th inch ball nose in there. So even without the 16th inch ball nose, it looks pretty good. Uh, there's some cleanup that would need to be done over here. I would probably move the uh, molding tool path to be just a little tighter then. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty good even without that. And so let's see what the time to cut is. It's only five hours. That's not too bad. And that's what this predicts. It could be faster on your machine. I still think this looks pretty good for as little work as we had to do. The uh, purpose of this video was to show you that tool inside of Aspire where you can take a bitmap and uh, with a little bit of work change it over into a relief model. And I think we did that. 
So I'm pretty happy with the information that I've got in this video, and if you are, please let me know. I would say that this isn't perfect. I would make some few modifications if I were going to try to get this to the point where I wanted to sell it. I think it worked pretty good, and I think if you want to take time and play with a few pictures that you have or get information out of AI, I showed you a brief amount from that, then you can bring it in here. An additional thing I wanted to do is show you how you could spruce it up using the molding toolpath. And I hope I did that. I do hope you learned something. And if you liked what you saw, you know what to do. And please give me some comments if there's other things you'd like to see. I was thinking about changing this one or another relief that I do into something I can print in my 3D printer. If you'd be interested in seeing how I would take this and change it into a... STL so that I could print it in my 3D printer? Give me that in the comments and I'll give it a consideration for the near future. With that, it's been a pleasure doing this video for you and I do hope it's helpful.